Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. I want to talk about chronic fatigue syndrome or myalgic encephalitis and fibromyalgia. So it's a very interesting paper recently uh, demonstrating that chronic fatigue syndrome, and again, it goes by also another name, myalgic encephalitis, as well as fibromyalgia, all have a high degree of leaky gut and basically bacterial translocation. So leaky gut is a term in medicine, like if you're looking at research papers, we use the phrase intestinal permeability. Okay, how porous is the gut? How much can stuff flow through? And then bacterial translocation specifically relates to byproducts of bacteria, and it's namely a molecule called lipopolysaccharide, or LPS. This is a, you know, I talked about my birds and fish outline of the bacteria that tend to inhabit the colon. On the outside of these bacteria, they have this LPS molecule, and when they're replicating, you just kind of release it, okay? It's not really like a toxin purposefully being released. It's just a, I refer to it as bacterial sawdust, like in a carpenter's workshop, just from making furniture, there's sawdust. And so just from the colonic bacteria replicating, they're making LPS kind of floating around. Now in the colon, there's no leaky gut. But when you have overgrowth or some other stressor in the small intestine, and now you have increased intestinal permeability or leaky gut, and bacterial fragments, LPS, are flowing through, um, that's called bacterial translocation. Now. They've shown in both chronic fatigue as well as fibromyalgia uh, that the markers for this are much, much higher than people without. And the interesting, and the markers they're looking at are zonulin 1, uh, serum LPS, and another marker called soluble CD14 that's a, a marker related to monocytes. And basically, if a white blood cell gets in contact with LPS, you're going to get a lot of uh, soluble CD14 <clears throat> float around. So, uh, yeah, they've got this. Now, am I surprised? Nope, not at all. I'm glad to see this study. Why? Because for a long time, we've been treating people with chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia and uh, with our basic protocol, and often we'll treat them initially with continuous rifaximin. They do awesome. Awesome. Now, they won't need long-term continuous rifaximin. Maybe you know, I might do it for four, six, eight months, depending how disabled they are until they're really feeling pretty strong and then we'll cut them back and they go to intermittent 10 day cycles uh, whenever their symptoms come back. But it's very effective and now we get some evidence that they do have cr uh, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia are really part of the same, they're just different symptoms of the same process. And that process is leaky gut or as we call it increased intestinal permeability with the, the leakage into the body of molecules from bacteria called lps and these things are highly highly inflammatory and the lps also can uh, get into your brain and if basically it takes your healthy uh, microglia that help repair your brain and it will turn them permanently into a primed m1 my Croglia. So, and you can read about that in my books. I talk about that. So, anyhow, uh, all you people with CSF, fibro, uh, get on some rifaximin, and uh, you know you 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 won't be uh, sorry you did. Take care now, everybody. Have a good day.